Welcome viewers to the fantasy series coverage of the ICC Women's T20 World Cup. Well, today we are going to cover the second semi-final of the tournament which is between South Africa and Australia. Now the first one between India and New Zealand will take place on the same day but it is starting at 9.30 am whereas this match starts at 1.30 pm. Now South Africa come into the semi-finals having top three or top their group by winning three of their four matches but the last one against West Indies was a washout. Australia on the other hand held their nerve to seal their spot in the semi-finals as they edged New Zealand in a thrilling contest. Now apart from the dominating win against Bangladesh, Australia's have been far from their best. So this by no means is a one-sided match. Now before we move on to a Dream 11 team selection, initially we'll have a look at the recent head-to-head -head record. We'll also quickly have a look at the ground stats and pitch conditions followed by the weather update. We'll also quickly have a look at the team news and injury updates. And then we will discuss the most important bit which is highlighting those key players for this match who should be part of your Dream 11 team. So guys do stick around to catch our Dream 11 team combinations which can help you win lots of cash prizes on Dream 11. Now let's start by having a look at the head to head record between these teams across all formats. Well the head to head records is something that a South African women team would not like to see before they walk on to the SCG. South Africa have never defeated Australia in World Cup matches or even in a bilateral series. Or in fact, Australia enjoyed a 4-0 record against South Africa in T20 World Cup encounters. Now if you look at the stats, well 10 matches have been played by both these teams and Australia have won 9 of them and only one which was a tied match. So history does give Australia an edge over South Africa. Even the recent clash between these two sides was when they met in the practice match, match of this very tournament, which Australia won by 4 wickets. Now moving on to the venue, pitch and weather conditions. Now this will be the first Women's World Cup T20 match on the Sydney Cricket Count. Overall, uh, SCG has previously hosted two Women's T20 matches, both won by Australia. One in 2009 against New Zealand and one in 2016 against India. But overall, 7 T20 matches have happened, 2 won by team batting first and 4 by team bowling first. The average first inning score stands at 156 and the second inning score stands at 134. Now Sydney cricket ground surface typically offers more spin as the season goes on. But the amount of rain around the city this week may also bring in some moisture and will also bring in the grass into play, which could mean seamers could also have a good day. But overall, it's a decent wicket to bat on as well. So whoever wins the toss would ideally want to bat first. Now, weather forecast for this match is not a good one. Rain is expected throughout the day with some dry patches and it will be really be a miracle if we can get a full game. Full game. Now, as per the tournament rules, 10 overs a side game is mandatory as compared to the previous 5 overs. So that means that it should be at least 2 hour window to finish this game. Now in case it's a washout then there are no reserve days. So South Africa will go into the finals as they have topped the group which could be a very heartbreaking scenario for the Australian women team. Now let's quickly have a look at the team news and injury updates. Now for South Africa well Marizin Cap didn't train on the eve of the game as a precautionary measure as she recovers from the respiratory tract infection. But given the current situation of this game she would be expected to have be at least part of the playing 11. Now for as for Australia well they suffered a very big a big uh, setback when Elisa Perry suffered a hamstring injury against the game in against New Zealand and has now been ruled out of the competition. Now either of Kimis or Sophie Molyneux can come in for Perry with the chances of later being higher. In fact as per the latest reports confirming that she has been training rigorously a day before the match. And considering Sophie's left hand orthodox pin, it will be more suited on this ground. So here are our probable elements for this match. Now first let me start by listing out the key players who should definitely be picked in your side. Now first we will start with the wicket keepers. Now Alicia, uh, now before I start you can see that we have also have put forward the points that have been earned by these players in the Dream 11 fantasy so far. So you know these points will also play an important role in selection and non-selection of players. 
Now Alicia Ailey is the key for Australia if they have to start well. She has already shown how destructive, destructive she can be when she scored 83 of just 53 balls against Bangladesh. She had also scored a well for 50 in the first game against India. And considering that she is a wicket keeper, she can give decent points to catch, run out and stumping as well. Now moving on, Lee Zilli blasted Thailand bowling by scoring a 6400. Though she failed to impress with the bat against Pakistan, she is a good pick considering her form. Now moving on to the key players and the batsman section. Well, Beth Mooney has been in good form of late, scoring consecutive 50s, which included 81 of 58 against Bangladesh and 60 of 50 against New Zealand, which was a very crucial knock. So she is definitely a key player. Now Meg Lanning has played the anchor role when Australian top order has failed, and she has steadied the ship in a couple of matches. And in such a semi-final clash, her experience will come in handy, and hence she becomes a key player. Now Laura Voldemort has required was required to bat only once in the last three matches, and that was against Pakistan, where she played a superb knock of 53 in 36 balls. She can be that key player in the latter half of the game when SA would need to up their scoring. Now moving on to the key players and the bowler section. Now just like Mooney, Megan Scott has come in a good in the last few matches where she has backed three wickets each against New Zealand and Bangladesh. Her spell against New Zealand was one of the main reasons why Australia won the game and her experience will again count in such big games. Now Shabnim Ismail has come good against Thailand where she backed three wickets. She continued that form against Pakistan where she ended with figures of 1 for 17 in four overs that included a maiden. So she becomes a key South African bowler from, from a dreamland perspective. Now moving on to the all-rounder section. Now Jess Johansson has been the most consistent and economical bowler for Australia in the World Cup and a left-time orthodox should play a big role on a pitch which assists the spinners. Now Marizan Cap is a solid all-rounder for South Africa and play a pivotal role in SA middle order. Depending upon the situation, and holds the key if SA have to score big. Now we have gone with her ahead of Dan Van Neerik as Dan Van Neerik has been a little out of touch of form with the bat especially in the last couple of matches and her credits are also quite high so we feel that Cap can be a much more uh, comfortable player to add into your team. Now apart from this players we have also out apart from the key players we have also listed out some differential players. Now these players might not be part of majority of the fantasy teams but if they click they would definitely give your team an edge to win most of the leagues. Now here we have listed out Sony Lou, Nicola Carey, Ashley Gardner and Georgia Vera. Now moving on now considering the pitch and the way the teams have approached the tournament so far the team who wins the toss will bat first and will try to put on runs and defend the score on a slow pitch. So considering this we have gone with two combinations. Now, if, if you start selecting your team, you'll realize that both Australia and South African players are priced quite high. So one has to be very smart and clever while picking these players along with a few who cost low. Now, if Australia were to bat first, then we will go with Team 1. Now, in Team 1, as you can see, we have gone with 7 Australian and 4 South African players. Now, with here, the thought is that Australia will win this game by scoring a good score. As you can see, we have gone with four key Australian players from the list discussed above. Here we have selected Gardner, Wareham and Sophie Molyneux. Gardner as we know can bat and bowl and has played a decent knock. Wareham was the player of the match against New Zealand and hence she becomes a key pick for us. Sophie Molyneux looks likely to come in and her left time orthodox bowling can come good on this pitch. On the South African side, we have gone with Sunelu and Megan Dupriz along with the key players of Cap and Ismail. Now here we have kept Healy as our captain and Johansson as a vice captain. Now Healy is someone who can, as we discussed, she can bat well and she can give points via wicket keeping as well. Whereas Johansson has been good form in the bowling, and the left arm bowling can come when can give uh, can give Australia a lot of wickets. Now moving on to the team two. Now if South Africa were to bat first, then we will go with team two. Here the thought process is that Australia will restrict South Africa to a comfortable score by taking maximum wickets. Hence we have strengthened the bowling attack by including Nicola Carey. He is also one of the lowest priced players who can help balance the budget. Now here we have made Johansson as our captain 
and Mooney as a vice captain considering the recent form. Now as we said earlier now we have gone with the thought that Australia given the recent record they will be too much of a competition for South Africa and so we feel that they will be clearly the winners no matter if they bat first or uh, bowl first. But basis your thinking you can select any of these two teams and join your private leagues. We have also listed out the key players so you can mix up those key players along with some differentials. So that's it from the fantasy wish team for now. All the best guys for this match and hope you win big following our tips. Please do like our video and do comment if you want if you share if you want to share some feedback related to our video. We would really appreciate it. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more updates on other upcoming matches as well. Thank you and happy fantasy.